Hey everyone, welcome back to this YouTube channel. So today I want to share with you um, common mistakes to avoid when you're coming to Canada as a student. So these are things that you should definitely look into before you ever apply for a study permit, before you ever apply for admission, before you ever seek to come to Canada as a student. Look at this video, watch this video, note these mistakes and avoid them completely. So mistake number one is choosing the wrong school. Many students look for schools, they shop around, you know, browse around for schools that they should come to in Canada and they just end up picking the wrong one. So look at the tuition, look at the program you want to study. Number one, if you're coming from certain countries, especially Nigeria, there are courses that you should probably not select if you're just looking to come to Canada. Like they're going to look at how useful is this degree in the country you're coming from because the expectation is that you're going back after you study. The expectation is not that you're staying in Canada. So you have to research if you're going to come to Canada and study music, how is that useful when you go back to your home country? You have to check that out. All right, so that's mistake number one. So mistake number one is choosing the wrong program. Never choose the wrong program. Check how useful is this program in my home country. If I'm coming here to study biological sciences or biochemistry, some course. I have to explain to the border agents or the immigration officer through a letter that this is how useful this program is in my country. And when I'm done studying, I'll be valuable back home. The idea is to always go back home after you study. All right. So mistake number two is choosing the wrong school. So many students look for schools around um, Canada and they just end up choosing the wrong school. The first thing to note when you want to choose a school is if the school is accredited. If the school um, will offer or the program will offer um, a postgraduate work permit when you're done studying. So you have to check out for that. Sometimes it's not every program that allows you to apply for a postgraduate work permit when you're done. So you have to check that. I know in SAIT, SAIT is Southern Alberta Institute of Technology, I think, and they will tell you under each program that this program is eligible for postgraduate work permit or it is not. So you always have to check that. All right. So mistake number three is choosing the wrong province. I feel like this should be even be number one or let's leave it at number three. But mistake number three is choosing the wrong province, especially when you're coming from a country that Canada's currency or dollars is just higher. Like everything you, every time you spend money here and you're convert, co converting it from your home country's currency, it's expensive. Avoid choosing the wrong province. Provinces like Ontario. Now, Ontario is a beautiful province, but it's expensive and it is just jam packed, in my opinion. I've been there a couple of times, a few times. And I feel like if you're a student, you're starting up. In Canada go to other provinces that are better with the cost of living cheaper with cost of living so provinces like Manitoba and Nova Scotia and um, New Brunswick and Prince Edward Island those provinces have cheaper tuition with the universities and they have a lower cost of living you always want to check your cost of living when you're coming from um, an outside country into Canada depending on any country you're coming from so I wouldn't choose I went straight to Winnipeg Manitoba and they have a huge black community Nigerian community in Winnipeg Manitoba if you want to start off with life easy and just ease into other provinces in Canada it's such a good platform to start up I always recommend going to Winnipeg Manitoba Right, so make sure you don't choose the wrong province. Check out the cost of living in those other provinces. Check out the, the ability for you to transfer to another status. I know in Alberta, it's a bit difficult to transfer from, say, work permit to permanent resident, as opposed to like Winnipeg, where it's like quick and easy. You know, so check other provinces, check other cities, look for the cheaper ones. Don't go straight to Ontario and Alberta, all the popular places, Vancouver. 
avoid Vancouver, please. It's so expensive. It is beautiful. I mean, so you pay for what you see. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful province, but it's definitely so expensive. So you're just coming from Nigeria, for example, and you're changing Naira to Canada dollars. I want to be paying <laughs> how much for rent in Vancouver for a small room. You are paying almost 1,800 for what? When you can pay a full house in Winnipeg. So choose a province, your province. Please make watch. sure you do your research. Don't pay anybody money online. Don't be desperate. There is a frenzy going on with accommodation and housing in Canada right now. A lot of people are homeless. A lot of people are looking for good places to stay. It's a whole thing. It's a mess. Nevertheless, do not give money to anybody you don't know online because you want to quickly secure a spot. Do your research, please. Do your research. Reach out to people. There is a settlement agency. They are very good. It's called One Stop Settlement Canada. I will link there. Yeah, I will put your link in my in the comment section of this video so you can check them out if you have nobody to do any research for you. These people will collect a fee, but they will definitely do a good research for you and you'll get a good spot to stay. My people, please avoid story that touches the heart. Make sure you do your research. All right, so um, another mistake is also I'm, I'm, I've been talking about choosing the right accommodation, making sure you get someone to check the place out. Don't send people money online because you're in a haste to secure a position or accommodation. Living with the wrong people could literally make your first year in Canada hell. When I mean hell, I mean hell. So you want to do your research yourself. I always advise people as much as you can try to try to stay in at least a room by yourself. If it if it takes two hundred dollars for you to pay somebody to go and check it out, it is better than sending two thousand dollars and like you are in a mess. Either your money is gone and this place is giving you is a rundown. I remember checking a place for my friend in April of twenty twenty three. And some of the places that we saw on Facebook market or one of these rental sites. And when we saw it in person, it was completely different. Some places that we saw, I could not believe they existed. So please, it's not abroad, abroad, everything is nice. Some places are drug houses and you will land in them if you don't do proper research. So pay money to agents if you don't have a friend or a family abroad. Let them go check it out for you. It's a one-time thing, but you have peace of mind. I always advise people, if you must share, because it's it's cheaper to share when you share something. Share your room, share your house, share your kitchen, share your bathroom. It's expensive when you want to live in a one-bedroom apartment. Yeah, more expensive. It's cheaper to pay $400 in a shared house. And to pay two thousand in an apartment or to yourself for a piece of. All right. Another thing with accommodation is the proximity from your house to your school. Some people don't even know they cannot Google, and sometimes Google will not give you accurate um distance when you are outside the country. Some people can't Google where this house I'm going to pay for is and where my school is. If your school is the first thing you're going to be focusing on, and then. How is that area? If I get a job, will I get a job in that area, number one? And if I don't even get a job in that area, is there good transportation around that area? You have to check that. The area that I live in is a brand new area. So the transportation there is not that established yet. When I, I have friends coming to Canada, I don't recommend my area to them. My husband has a car. I have a car. It's so easy for us to go to work and come back. But if they are going to come and be staying here and be going to school, there is no good transportation system here. It's a brand new area. When they establish brand new communities, it takes a little bit of time for them to establish, establish public transportation around those houses. So I would never advise you guys to come. I would never advise them to come all the way to this side. I would say go to the city side where you can get easier transportation. Because sometimes if you see a house... Because you don't know, right? You are, you are in Nigeria, you are in Kenya, you are in Uganda, you are in India. You don't know the distance. And they can list a house in Syracuse, which is like 45 minutes. This is Manitoba, right? Which is like 30 minutes from your school. And you don't have a car. And the bus system might not be established. Some, some, some people have to Uber. And Uber, you'll be paying almost $50 per journey. It's not funny at all. So... 
making those proper research is super important before you think about coming to Canada. Make your do your own research. Make sure you are making proper research when you are thinking of coming to, to Canada. So my to last mistake, um, my last mistake for the day, I will make another video if I do remember more mistakes. But the last mistake for the day is choosing a program that is not useful to you in your country, neither is it useful for you in Canada. You just want to study a, a course even though you end up staying in Canada. You just want to study a course that you cannot work with. So there are some courses in the sciences that you cannot really work with. And there are courses in the sciences that are like, oh, you get good jobs. Social work is one of them. But I have made a video on the courses you should read when you're coming to Canada. Like courses you should read, the universities you should go to, the colleges that I advise people to go to. Some people do know about colleges. And it depends on the country you're coming from. There are ideas about colleges in probably in your home country. Where I come from, colleges are often looked down upon. It's like, oh, colleges is lower than university. But in Canada, colleges are better, in my opinion, to universities. You get jobs faster. So I have made a video on type of courses that you should read when you come to Canada. But definitely choose a good course that you can get a good job from so that you don't have to start suffering. Another thing is that student loans are now available to international students. So... You might have just borrowed money from your home country or like stressing your parents or your sponsors and at the end of the day you cannot just pick up a job and make that money back so choosing the right course from scratch is super important anyways thank you for watching this video um i hope you learn from these mistakes definitely leave me um a message or a comment if you have questions and i will be sure to get back to you Have a